So it's Thanksgiving this episode. Jillian's dad wants to talk to her about something. It looks pretty serious, but she's jittery because of her steamy dreams and guilty conscience about what happened with Obi. They slept together. Audrey is also still all jittery, thinking about her threesome with Aki and Max. Aki is all awkward about it as well. They obviously had a nice time together, but they haven't been together without Max since it happened. Max tries to smooth things over and encourages them to try to enjoy being together, just the two of them again, to get past the awkwardness. Max is spending time with his father and his birth mother. Remember, his other father moved out and his parents are separated. One of his fathers was unable to come to terms with the gender expression of the other. Max and his birth mom end up plotting a parent trap type scheme, which eventually has them all forced to spend Thanksgiving together as a family. Family. Obi and Jillian meet up for a chat before school. They're feeling guilty and all hot and bothered, but they're trying to convince themselves that it was just a mistake, a once-off that'll never happen again. As usual, Obi is being goofy about it. He still tries to touch her hand and he can't fight the scorching chemistry, but Jules doesn't want to hurt Zoya. Too late, Jules. So she wants to try and move on from this. Godspeed, you two. Max sent the Gossip Girl teachers a video proving that the teacher was creeping on him and he wants Gossip Girl to expose him, but of course Kate doesn't want to at first, I think. Then it turns out that the teacher changed the Gossip Girl password anyway to protect her secret. Zoya invites Obi and Jules to Thanksgiving. They can't go. Then she invites Kate, who says she has other plans. Zoya and Julian are chatting in the bathroom then, and Zoya reminds Julian that Julian had told her that she was still in love with Obi, and she asks for the truth once and for all. Jules says that it's just taking her a minute to move on because they had been together for a very long time, but Obi chose Zoya, so she has nothing to worry about. Audrey and Aki are having trouble being together after trying, so they hook up with Max again, and it ends up being all hot and it feels right, as though Max is the missing ingredient for them in the bedroom. Obi is suddenly confused about how he feels Feels. As I said, he's so goofy that I don't know how to be mad at him, but he's also being a pretty bad guy here and a bit of a coward because I think he would just go along with having a side relationship with Julian while for some reason also dating Zoya. Zoya goes on a walk with him and asks him why he's being so weird. He panics and tells her that he loves her, which, oh, Obi. Zoya tells Jules that Obi said that he loves her and that she loves him back. Jules is all, mm, Obi sometimes rushes into things. It's clear to Zoya that Jillian is being shady. The girls fight. Jillian is upset by this revelation and so she goes to Obi asking why he'd say that to Zoya. He tells Jules that he loves her and they make out, out on the street, while Taylor Swift's This Is Me Trying plays in the background. It's wrong, but it's a good scene. Aki comes out as bye to his mother and his mother tells him that she loves him. Through some kind of comedy of errors, literally everyone on the show ends up at Zoya's for Thanksgiving. Zoya tells Obi that now that she knows how he feels about her, she's ready to have sex with him. He doesn't really want to, but because he's kind of gross and weak, he's all, uh, what am I gonna do? When he could just break up with her. That would be too easy though. All of the secrets come out at the Thanksgiving dinner table. The Max teacher thing. The Audrey, Max, Aki threesome. Aki being bi. Zoya wanting to sleep with Obi and Jules's potential jealousy. Jules's dad's girlfriend announces that they're engaged and then Aki brings up the moment from part one where he got a call from his dad telling him to stay away from Jules. He asks why, but the truth bombshell about Julian and Obi sleeping together also comes out so we don't get an answer about why Aki's dad had said that. At this point, I thought it had something to do with her dad's business dealings. The gross teacher, I know that's being unspecific, quits. The first decent thing he's done in a while. We love it when the trash takes itself out. He's still gross though. He tells the teachers that they need to stop this whole gossip girl thing and he rightfully kind of lectures them on perpetuating this kind of ugliness. Zoya officially breaks things off with Jules. I think this is good. Zoya needs to find her own friends and do her own thing because I don't really know who she is outside of trying to fit in with the Upper East Side set. Jules' dad's girlfriend drunkenly wanders out loud to Kate whether he proposed because he loves her or because he doesn't want her to testify against him. Kate and the other teachers agonize about whether or not to post it. The guy is like, you must, but Kate instead chooses to post the Obi and Jules kiss. Poor Zoya at the end of the episode, she sees the photo and she's crying in bed. In episode eight, Jules is worried about why Aki's dad would warn him against spending time with her. And in an attempt to preempt the bad press that she might get, she tries to make amends to everyone to highlight her good qualities. She tries apologizing to Monet, which good, because I need Monet back in the fold. Jules's dad offers to give Zoya and her dad a place to live. And on the one hand, who would say no to free rent from a rich person? But on the other, I don't get it. Zoya's 
lawyer father can't afford to get a place, I need more transparency regarding his financial situation. Audrey tells Max that she and Aki are good now, so he's gently and subtly being told that he's no longer needed. Obi is with his mother on CNN talking about the protest. He reminds me a bit of Kendall from Succession when he decided to go back into the family fold after what happened in England. Obi is on some kind of apology tour and his family is kind of using him to whitewash their shadiness for good PR. The Gross teachers are discussing the Jules dad story. They have a whole panel of teachers to discuss the implications of releasing that story. Oh man, we didn't want the teachers on the show and now they've just doubled down. I hate this so much. Max is hooking up with a ballerina, but he's struggling to perform a bit. He goes to Luna for advice because of course everyone does. She tells him that he's now experienced sex with some emotion involved. So doing it casually now doesn't quite do it for him. He'll be fine though. So he tries to go on an actual date with a ballerina that he's been hooking up with, but it goes terribly. He might have some actual feelings for Audrey and Aki. Jules wants to make things right with Zoya who isn't having it. She tells Jules that she deserves everything that comes her way. Gossip Girl then drops the story on Jules's father. Apparently he was with a woman and she may not have consented. Jules's father says that he's never been alone with a woman before, she must be retaliating. Of course, all men in this position would say something like this, but ugh, I really don't want this rumor about him to be true. I was really hoping that it was some kind of tax evasion thing. Aki goes to see his dad and asks him about the Jules dad story. Aki's dad says that he wanted to run the story in his paper, but his people had been digging for months and they couldn't run the story because they couldn't place the woman with Jules's dad on the night in question. Zoya's dad pushes her to talk to Jules. So I wanted to go easy on Zoya this season, but I don't know, she's very self-righteous. Even when she's making a good point, she calls Jules and ends up going on about how she's the better person, but she then sends a tip to Gossip Girl telling them that Jules's dad has a secret apartment. I know she feels above it, but she's in there slinging mud with the rest of them. Zoya's dad then ropes in Kate to talk to her about everything, which I don't know, it never really makes things better. Sometimes it makes things worse. All the teachers are having some kind of fight about the way that Gossip Girl is run. These adults need to get lives. They have Kate step down as Gossip Girl. Zoya and Julian have it out in public at Jules's dad's recording label party. Both Aki and Obi finally stand up to their parents. Zoya's father tells her that it was him who kept her and Jules apart. When she was five, Jules's dad tried to reconcile, but Zoya's dad said no, and even threw away his apology letter, as well as any subsequent attempts that Jules's dad made to reconcile. So the thing that Zoya has been blaming Jules's dad for wasn't actually his fault. Aki sends more information to Jules and the girls look around. The story is actually about him and someone named Riley, not the woman who came forward who publicly accused him. There are texts though that show that Riley didn't remember hooking up with Jules's dad. There are also a bunch of texts from other women who have similar experiences of not remembering their hookups with him. At the end of the episode, Obi is taking photos of some documents and he sends them to Gossip Girl. In episode nine, Max is baking croissants and missing Audrey and Aki. My God, he's gorgeous. And I love that he bakes. Jules and Zoya go to a lawyer who advises them to stay out of Jules's dad's thing and let the process play out. There are other women who haven't come forward, remember? Until they do, there isn't much that they can do. Zoya is especially peeved about this. She's all super supportive now that it looks like Jules's dad is guilty. Like now she has a cause. It's wrong to say, but it's the vibe I'm getting. Not that she takes any joy in it or anything like that, but she's been vindicated and she's all amped to bring everything to light, which in her defense isn't wrong. Kate looks a little pathetic at first. She feels left out of the Gossip Girl thing, so she's meddling again, but maybe rightly so, because the new Gossip Girl basically implies that Jules is somehow involved in a cover-up for her dad. The new group is even worse and their whole MO seems to be destroy the kids. Eventually, Jules's dad talks to her about everything and they want to work it out. Zoya is really mad about this. Max tries to parent trap his parents into spending time together again. I don't understand why the dads just can't spend time with him together and not be in a relationship. Maybe then he wouldn't be so desperate for them to get back together if he knows that they're still a family. Now that Aki is out, a guy at school named Rex asks him out. He gives Aki his number and Aki admits to Audrey that he finds Rex very attractive and she tells him that it's fine and she encourages him to explore that. Max sees all of this and he's jealous and feeling a little left out. Then, oh no, Jules enlists Zoya's help in finding out whether the other women have stories and will come out. 
She needs to know the truth. Obi drives them to meet one of the women, but she wants no part of this. She has a life now, she's moved on, and she also doesn't remember anything. She can't be of any help to any of them. Aki and Rex have coffee together, and Aki is a little shy. He's not sure if this is what he wants, especially since Audrey is going to be going out with the barrister. They end up going out with these other people, and they both kiss their dates. I'm not into this, I want Max back, but Max is spending time with his dad, who takes him to his childhood home, and they have a heart to heart. The storylines with Max and his parents are actually my favorites on the show. Also look at his eyes. Jules has a plan to keep Gossip Girl off her trail. I never get what the plans are on the show until everything is fully revealed. Anyway, the plan here was that the friend group sends in hundreds of tips saying that they'd spotted Jules all over the city. Audrey and Aki admit that they don't want to be in an open relationship after all, but they're grateful that they gave each other the opportunity to explore that. This was all really sweet and mature. I liked it. Then Jules gets a text saying that Riley wants to come forward about what happened between her and Jules' dad. Zoya's dad says that if Riley were to come forward now, the girl who brought forward the false accusation using Riley's story could be sued for defamation. So it's not the best idea that she come out with a story right now. Jules tells Riley this, and of course in an attempt to help Jules, Kate records the conversation, sends it to Gossip Girl, but it's misconstrued then in the media as Jules trying to silence one of her father's potential victims. On the one hand, that's what you get for meddling Jules. You were advised to leave this be. On the other though, I'm a Jules apologist, so I hope the truth comes out because she has enough to deal with. And that brings us to the end of this Gossip Girl recap. As for my thoughts, I know that the Me Too discourse is really important, but I just don't know if I needed it from the show. I wanted more fun scandals. The frenemies, back to being friends, back and forth with Zoya and Jules is irritating because we know that it's never going to stick either way. The show can't seem to give them separate storylines that don't involve them together, and it's annoying. I'm surprisingly into the Aki, Audrey, and Max storyline, but that's because I really like all three characters, and it's a good slow burn. I cannot believe the teachers are taking up this much screen time. This is an absolute travesty. I was really glad to see Luna and Monet, but they're being criminally underused in part two, so I need to see more of them. Anyway, that's it for this video, and uh, I'll be recapping the next three episodes next week, so be sure to tune in for that, and thank you for watching.